Hello everyone, hope you're having a fantastic day, and welcome back to Mycorza, or Mycorza, Mycorza, I can't remember, I don't know if it's actually pronounced, but we're going to head back into the original pets chapter of the game, and instead of going through the one path of take a look around, which we went then uh, and got to, was it Lanny? Lanny sending us to his sister, we're going to do the ask f for help, which I did in the demo and seeing what kind of changes happened in this. Because all I remember, although I don't want to spoil what happens, but I just remember basements, an apartment complex, and running in a grassy field for the gist of it. But we'll see how much has changed from my memory, because it's been a, a few years since I last played to my memory. But yeah, just getting back into it. We'll ask for help. I was sure that they'd turn me away, but I was desperate. This was an emergency, after all. Uncertainly, I approached the closest house and knocked. I was surprised when the door actually opened. Hi there, come on in. How nice of you to visit. Before me stood a fashionably dressed woman with a big smile on her face. She seemed welcoming, but her movements were rather stiff and almost mechanical. It was as if they had been practiced over and over again. The hat, scarf, and the bag around her shoulder suggested that she was just about to leave. She seemed to notice my confused look. Oh, the bag, don't worry about it. I just think it suits me, so I've gotten used to wearing it around the house. That seemed un un impractical, but I guess she was very conscious about her appearance. Now come on in. Everyone's already inside. Uh, do we know each other? She took another thorough look at me and seemed to realize that we did, in fact, not know each other. Ah, you must be a new neighbor then. I'm Sabrina. Come in. Hmm, suspicious. She disappeared before I could correct her. I, hesit I hesitantly followed her inside. On my way in, I saw a pet food bowl near the entrance with some of the strange looking plants in it. Huh, she'd been feeding those to her pet. I peeked into the living room. A man leapt to his feet as he saw me and stretched his big hand out to me. His coat suggested that he was inactive in scientific field and that he had gotten here right after work. His other arm hung down limply. Hi there, it's nice to meet you. I'm Frederick. How are you doing? I reciprocated his firm handshake and he cheerfully gestured me to take a seat beside him. To my surprise, the girl who had helped me earlier was here as well. I believed her name was May. She gave me a small wave. It's starting to feel like a festivity. We should have neighborhood get-togethers like these more often. Oh right, this is... She turned and frowned in my direction while trying to remember a name she hadn't asked me for. Haha, <laughs> Scott. I'm, I'm Scott. Right, Scott. He moved in nearby recently, I think, so I thought we should invite him in as well. Certainly, it is nice to meet you. Ah, no, I'm not really... Oh right, give me a second. She rushed into the kitchen and came out with the steaming dishes of food. I could make out different kinds of meat, baked potatoes, and more. My stomach gave off, a deep growl, and my mouth began to water. Any thought of honesty about my origin was gone. The other visitors started piling food onto their plates, and I followed suit. As I devoured it, and life came back to my body, I let my eyes wander over the others. Everyone seemed to be tense, especially Sabrina and Frederick. Hmm. Their movements were rather stiff. Every now and then, they threw glances each other's way, glances that seemed to indicate mistrust. Sabrina seemed to especially be eyeing the cup that Frederick was drinking out of. <sighs> Every now and then, when they'd notice each other's looks, they'd put on a fake smile. May seemed like she hadn't planned to be here in the first place. She Was she dragged into it, just like I was? As I was cleaning my plate of its scraps, something important flashed into my mind. Excuse me, would you mind if I used your phone? Sabrina tisked. I'm afraid I don't have one. I never cared for those buggers. She looked over to Frederick. Maybe he can use yours. Of course, I can show you to my house once we're ready to go. I gave off a sigh of relief and thanked Frederick. He waved his hand in the air. No problem at all. Please excuse me for one moment, though. He shuffled out of the room, presumably toward the bathroom. All right, I'll make some more tea. She scooped up Frederick's cup and left me alone with May. We're going to save here just in case. I cleared my throat and nodded in May's direction. Thank you again for lending me your phone. I did appreciate that. You're welcome. I hope you will have more luck with the landline. Yeah, I hope so too. 
And I guess that was the end of the conversation. Perhaps she still felt uncomfortable speaking to a weird smelling stranger. I'm going to wash my dishes. And there she went. The other two were taking quite a while. I used the opportunity to let my eyes wander around the room. The walls were dressed with paintings of all kinds of pictures of nature as well as more abstract drawings. A framed piece of paper and a photograph that was standing on the drawer beneath it caught my eye. The former seemed to be an art degree, the latter a picture of Frederick and Sabrina when they were younger. Uh, <laughs> it's like... Do I it's not the pictures I'm looking at, of course. Uh, they, if they looked younger and were these images, that'd be kind of funny, though. They were standing somewhere that could be a university campus, so I wish the game would actually show us then those pictures rather than stay on this frame. Both had genuine smiles on their faces. It seemed like their friendship went back quite a bit. Hmm? Hey! Whoa! Did she sneak up behind me? I thought I had a clear view of the kitchen entrance. I, th I think I heard some rumbling coming from downstairs. It'd probably be a good idea to check it out in case Sabrina hurt herself. I don't trust you. Oh well, Sabrina has been gone for quite a while. Maybe something did happen to her. Perhaps it should take a look, but what about Frederick? May's face slightly tensed up as she heard his name. Frederick is still occupied. The way she said his name sounded almost hostile, but she sounded convincingly confident either way. I felt May's eyes follow me to the basement. No, you don't go in the basement. I squinted down the stairs. It was almost pitch black. I swallowed back my nerves and carefully crept down into the darkness. Maybe I should have called out to Sabrina, but something told me not to. Why was she down here? Didn't she tell us that she wanted to make more tea? I managed to reach the bottom stair and peeked around the corner. There I saw her kneeling by a lamplight in front of a large cage. A large basket of the strange plants sat beside her. There, there, it's all right. Take a good sniff of the cup. We need to hurry, okay? I know that he's growing another one. I know he sent one after their parents. I'll avenge them and get rid of the, my biggest rival in one go. She held Frederick's cup to the bars. Something in her voice disturbed me. Whatever was going on, I wouldn't. I wanted no part of it. I returned to the living room as quietly as I could. There you are. All ready to go? Upon hearing Frederick's loud voice, I jumped. What I had seen in the basement had me had made me anxious. I took a quick look around and saw that May was already gone. Sure, I'm ready. Leaving already, I just made some more tea. I turned to see Sabrina standing in the living room entrance with a practiced smile. Ah, uh, sorry dear, I'm just not young enough to stay out like we used to. She put on a playful pout. Oh, you do wound me. Come by again, you know you're welcome any time. We'd bid our farewells and set out into the cold night. I was glad to leave. What I had seen was still nagging on my mind. Frederick might be in danger, I had to tell him. I er... hesitated. I hesitated. How was I supposed to tell him when I myself wasn't sure what I had seen? But I collected myself and went for it. To my surprise, he wasn't nearly as upset at Sabrina as I thought he would be. He actually seemed more upset at me. I think you should not have snooped around in the house of someone who invited you over. I was left perplexed what just happened. I thought I was warning him, but instead I've been scolded like a child. His face relaxed and he gave me his usual smile. It seemed slightly pained this time. I suppose there's no harm done. Perhaps he just didn't believe me. I couldn't blame him. I noticed more and more vacant houses as we crept through the town. Some were boarded up. Doors had been left wide open. Why were there so many empty houses here? These houses had been vacant for a while now. I was sure that I had passed by here earlier, but I didn't notice any abandoned buildings back then. An uneasy feeling started to fester inside me. Here we are. We stopped before a house that looked much like every other house in this town. He stepped inside. I hesitated at the entrance before trailing him, uh, trailing behind him. Come on in. No, to be, no need to be so shy. Do you want anything to drink? Uh, yeah, no, no, no I don't trust anything by you goddamn bastards. <laughs> Drinking seems bad. Frederick hesitantly grunted and led me down the hallway. I only wanted to use the phone and get out. Everything that had happened today had me on edge. But what if I still couldn't reach anyone? Where would I go? I was bouncing a fine line between hope and despair. The phone call would be what would topple me in their either direction. Alright, here you are. The phone seemed rather old-fashioned, but at least I had buttons instead of a rot rotary dial. I picked up the receiver and tried a number. 
Am I doing something wrong? There's no dial tone. Ah, let me see. He took the receiver from my hand and pressed a few buttons. He let out a disappointed sigh. Not again. Those damn rodents keep getting to my cables. I'll go take a look at it. Feel free to make yourself at home. Ah, in case you get thirsty. He fetched a small bottle of soda from the kitchen, gave it to me, and went into the basement. Well, I mean, if it's a bottled water that is unopened, still sealed, and isn't a local source of water, then I would maybe trust it. It seemed like I wouldn't be able to leave quite soon. Once I held a drink in my hand, I did start to get thirsty. Uh, I took a sip and thought about what to do next. Well, at least it's maybe not poisoned. And we had no control about going in the basement or not. I can't remember if we had control of snooping in the house or not beforehand. Um, let's take a look around. And check the study. Entering Frederick's study felt like I was crossing a line. After all, he had invited me into his home and was trying to help me. But my curiosity overwhelmed me. I was wondering what that thing in Sabrina's basement was, and maybe I could find answers here. I took a look at the table to see what he was working on. I flipped over a flipped over picture frame and an open journal grabbed my attention. I decided to sneak a peek at the picture and was surprised to find a photograph of Sabrina and Frederick. They looked older than in the picture that had that I had seen at Sabrina's place. It depicted them in a park as if they were having a picnic. A canvas was set up nearby. Why was it lying around face down? Perhaps he just hadn't had the time to hang it up yet. I turned my attention to the journal. His writing was messy, but I would probably be able to decipher it with some effort. What should I do? No, we can read everything. We can, you know, we can... Well, let's take the book. Normally I wouldn't steal, but this couldn't be further from a normal situation. I had no idea when he'd come back and how much time I had to read it. As I picked up the book, something fell out, and I was startled by the sound and froze. Slowly I picked it up and curiously looked at it. It was a small key, possibly for a mailbox or a drawer. While wondering where the key would fit, I heard approaching footsteps. My heartbeat accelerated. In a panic, I hastily put the key and the notebook into my pockets while quickly exiting the room. I had to hope that the damn book is, like, very, very, very tiny, like, handkerchief size. Because the fact of, like, putting, like, what would possibly be... Like, you imagine, like, a normal-sized book, and the guy just shoves it in his pocket like you could fit, like, a wheel of cheese and Skyrim into your pocket. Alright, it's all done. I jumped. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. No, it's fine. Good thing he didn't catch me snooping around. The phone should be working now. Feel free to give it a try. I'll give you some space. Call me when you're done. He took the bottle I had drunk from earlier and left through the hallway. Well, we're not trusting that bottle ever again now. I had an odd sense of deja vu. I shook it off and started dialing some numbers. They were the same that I'd already tried on May's mobile phone, and once again they failed to connect. But how could that be? I was 100% certain that they were correct. I tried all the numbers of friends, family, and even work colleagues I could think of until finally. Yes, hello? It was a woman's voice that I didn't recognize. I was certain that I had dialed the number of one of my colleagues. Excuse me, isn't this Tom's telephone? I don't know who that is. Are you another scam caller? Don't call me again. She hung up. Alright, something was definitely wrong here. It might be best to talk to Frederick and see if he could help me somehow. Maybe he had a clue as to how I could get back home. I crept down the hall. He went this way, right? I began to hear some murmuring. A steady chill ran down my back. I was gonna say, it's fine. But then I said back. The sound was coming from the basement. The old floorboard squealed beneath my toes. I saw flickers of a weak light coming from down the steps. I took them as gently as I could as I held a hand over my mouth to quiet my breath. I reached the bottom and turned a corner. Frederick knelt before a big cage, a small lamp next to him, and held something by up to the bars. He hissed to whatever was inside. Yes, yes, you have the scent now, don't you? We must take care of this one tonight. He's curious. He will find the secret much faster than the others. No, 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 we can't have him make something like you. It's kill or be killed in this town. My stomach dropped out from underneath me as I heard the horrible scraping from inside the cage. I took a step back, bumping into a wall. Before I could react, I had accidentally switched on the main light. The sudden flood of white blinded me for a moment. Once my eyes adjusted, the first thing I saw was it. Frederick was screaming at me, but I could barely think about him. I couldn't look away from that creature. 
It was cowering inside a dirty cage that seemed to be too small for it. It had fed the features of a dog, but I could also see of some elements that were distinctly human-like. Its mouth was way too big, and the inside of it was filled with a seemingly random set of teeth, or at least something that resembled teeth. Worst of all, though, were the enormous eyes staring right back at me. Frederick fumbled with the lock on the cage, my feet finally began to move. I ran out of the house and into the streets. All the while one thought was frantically running through my head, I had to get out. I had to get away from this demented town. With this thought clouded in my mind, I hadn't realized that I had exited town already. I was now on a big grassy plain. Yeah. Oh, that sounded familiar to what I brought up. Breathing heavily, and with fear flooding my mind, I had almost not noticed how heavy my legs had become. Soon I was struggling to stay on my feet, and my vision slowly darkened from exhaustion and panic. I wanted to look back to see how close the monster was, but I was too afraid of seeing it right behind me. I gathered my courage and quickly glanced behind me, and to my surprise, the thing wasn't following me. I didn't know if it had ever followed me in the first place, but it seemed like Frederick wanted to send it after me to kill me. Realizing that I was safe for now, I stopped. My legs were numb and almost gave in, but I managed to keep standing. I couldn't believe what I had just seen, it couldn't have been real. Every inch of my body repulsed the idea of such a monster existing, but I had seen it with my own two eyes. I needed to rest, but stopping could be risky. Yeah, and I can remember what happens here too. <laughs> We're gonna take a break! I should really take a quick break to make sure that I wouldn't collapse along the way. So I sat down for a bit, and kept, look, uh, kept a lookout for the monster. After catching my breath, I suddenly remembered the journal. Maybe this would be a good time to take another peek inside. It's a mistake, but we're going to do it anyways. A small peek wouldn't hurt. I might find some clues as to what that thing was. I opened it to the very beginning and began to read. I've discovered the cause of the pet disappearances. No one was stealing them or killing them. They just changed. I installed a GPS chip on my own dog and followed it around to see what was going on. Eventually, I found it eating one of those odd-looking plants. I tried to stop it, but it growled at me. Never had I seen it act that way before. There was nothing I could do but let it finish. I took one of those plants with me to study it. And not too long after, I noticed that my dog had changed. It was a bit bigger, and its hair was falling out in great quantities. It also started to bark at me seemingly for no reason. I tried a bit of the plant myself, hoping to see why it was so drawn to it, but found the taste nearly unbearable. I set the journal down. I thought I just heard a sound. I jerked my head around to, around me to find the source. There's nothing. Maybe it's just my imagination, or maybe it was time to keep moving. Oh, we're gonna continue reading, of course. I awoke the next day to a piercing pain in my right arm. At first, I was horrified to find that it was entirely bent out of shape, but something inside me suppressed my fear. I calmly stood to fix it. At first, I thought about getting rid of it, but the pain had already subsided. I was able to flatten it by beating it with a hammer. I'd lost all feeling in the limb by that point. What would people think if I went out with a bent arm? I began to look for my dog. The first thing I found were large animal footprints. But my question is if this is the guy, but he said his right arm. Wasn't it his left arm that was broken, though? I'm pretty sure it was his left arm. I'm pretty, pretty sure it was left arm. So maybe it's a discrepancy of saying right arm instead of left arm, because right arm was the one he waved with. But if his left, if he said it was his right arm that twisted, but it looked like his left arm was the damaged one. I don't know, maybe a discrepancy. But I don't know. The first thing I found were large animal footprints, much too large for its paws. The kitchen had been torn apart and strange hair littered the whole house. Then I found it. Or at least something that was once my dog. I could still see the resemblance, but most of its hair had fallen out and its jaw was dislocated. It began to growl as soon as it saw me. Shortly after, it jumped on me with no provocation. It was hard to keep off with just one hand, but its teeth had fallen out, making it nearly harmless. I managed to knock it out and lock it up in the basement. Now I had definitely heard something. I felt real uneasy about this, but I didn't want to stop reading. I felt so close to figuring out something crucial. Which is why we want to read, so we can learn some lore points, even if it possibly causes bad things to happen. A little more couldn't hurt. I couldn't see any sign of that monster anywhere. I should be fine. Alright, where was I? I froze up. There was definitely something near me. And it was close. 
way too close. I could almost feel its ragged breath on my skin. My heart was racing, starting to race. My chest contracted to the point where I had difficulties breathing. I started to slowly... Try again. So, hmm. I'm gonna imagine we could actually just read the book at any other time. But what I'm going to do is go back at this point. Because uh, the save we're at in the field is where we're going to want to go. But we're going to stay here and wait and see what happens. You're just going to wait, yes. And then he says it's done. And then the phone call will definitely fail. The same person. If we do that, then it's like... Yeah, see, it's 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 his left hand. His right hand is fine, but it still leads to the same pathway. So if we just wait there, we don't get a chance to find things. We'll take a look around. Now, if we check the living room, what happens? It was only one room over. Surely he wouldn't mind. He said I should feel at home. After all, the living room was minimalistic and unimpressive. A TV stood in the corner, gathering dust. His bookshelf was well maintained. On the other hand, I looked over the books. He seemed pretty interested in biology. I'd love to chat with him about his field sometime once I get out of this mess. I chose a random book with a cover and opened it. It seemed to be a handwritten notebook. I quickly shut it to recheck the title. It seemed like I had pulled out a fantasy book instead of notes on biology. Evolutionary development intersections between botany and zoology. That would be a rather weird name for a fantasy novel, but the depictions on pages confirmed it being fiction. The pages showed drawings of creatures I'd never seen before, accompanied by detailed graphs and diagrams. I returned the book and went back to the hall. <laughs> what if we go back there? Hmm, same thing. So it's like we'd be able to maybe go here and then the pictures... Oh. Ah, okay. We only have two choices then. But the pathway we took of getting the book and the key likely is the perfect thing, because we have permanent items along with us because of it. I'm going to make sure... yes, loading. And we'll take a look around and check the pictures then. I took a look at the pictures hanging on the wall, or in the hall. There were too many, but he seemed to be pretty cheerful in all of them, especially the ones with his dog. For some reason, I hadn't seen it around. Nothing else caught my eye. Alright, well, yeah, that's all of them. Because we got a key with us that will possibly prove useful depending on what the key is meant for. I don't know if we'll ever go back to his house, or if we'll be going to, like, a laboratory or a warehouse that it maybe belongs to. But, um... We'll continue on. We still have the key in the book, we can read it at any time. And we've read as much as we could. Um... But yeah, not reading it for now, unless we get a chance to read it later. It depends if we do get a chance to read it later, when we're actually safe or not. It was way too risky, I should keep moving. Hell knows what that monster would do if it found me. I continued on at a slower pace this time, and soon came to a small but quickly flowing river. It wasn't a good night to get my clothes wet, but it looked small enough for me to jump over with a running start. I wasn't the athletic type. I wasn't the athletic type, but I managed to leap over the gap. Suddenly my feet staggered. A wave of fatigue came over me. It was as if I had stepped into a veil. The air had gotten heavier and my breathing became more ragged. I clutched my chest as if to figure out what was going on. A throbbing pain pulsed through my back. It was as if something had stabbed me. This familiar dialogue. My feet gave in and my vision darkened. Well, he's like, if I don't take a short break, I die. I could feel a presence near me, the monster, Frederick. Before I could find out, my consciousness faded. It's not a good ending, for sure. You found key one. Oh, is that going to be the end from that category? Oh, it's a good thing I saved there then. But yeah. There's two pathways as a result. That's the curious thing about this. Like, the branching pathways. I'm going to imagine it stops. And, like, it changes the second door. Or it changes, like, everything else. So, let's see what happens then if we take a little break. We'll read it, but stop. They set the journal down. Mm-hmm. Uh, no. It's way too risky. I should keep moving. Hell knows that monster do. Continue. Uh, I continued on at a slower pace. And he jumped over. Hmm. Hmm. Still happens, huh? 
Okay, what if... I'm sure it's like, take a break. But don't read. Nope, same thing. But at the very least, in this pathway, if we were to continue with this, we have, yeah, key one. Which definitely would have possibly some significance later on in the game, or at the end. Perhaps with some secret ending, or just a true ending. Like, I'd imagine it's like, if there's different characters for each arc, or each door, then perhaps we need like a key two and a key three. And that's the only way to really solve the mystery. But I'd be curious on what would happen based on, the, obviously, the pathway of, um... Hmm... Well, that means with that, we'd have to... let me think. Technically speaking, what I'll want to do is then optimize the saves. Because this one... The veil happens here, yeah. His consciousness fades, and then it exits out of it. This save here, I will save here. Yep. And then we will load here. And save it up on the top right. Okay, so now it's like, with door one, we have two pathways, which is the save one and save two, and... If, like, it should be, like, a different pathway, and I don't know which one I'd want to do next, but when we enter door two, I'm going to presume it's, like, say, we reload this save, and then when we click the second door, it'll continue off from here. Probably. And if we reload it from here, and then click the second door, it should continue when we're in the field, unless we start as a different character. But I'm not sure, and we'll have to find out in the next episode. Because right now, though, I'm curious about the key... So we'll do it with this one. If you want, no, we'll, we'll, let's just go for that. You know what? Uh, read it temporarily. If I continue reading, it should be fine, but I have to run afterwards. No, run. And then the veil. The only question I'd have... a key one. Key one definitely has to be of some importance. And you have to find it by the multiple uh, pathways. Mm. Okay. But, you know what? Mm. I just want to know what damn happens. Then, end the episode. I want to know if it continues immediately after. Like, are we in the field or is it different? A guide to funny faces. We have a key. But where and what happens? Or it's a different character, a different thing. I shot awake, panting heavily, my clothes sticking to my skin due to all the sweat. Huh, we were in this room? My eyes started around the room, but everything was quiet and seemed to be safe. A nightmare. There's some kind of animal or monster? There's some eerie plant. I'd forgotten most of the dream, but I knew that it must have been terrifying. Interesting. Alright, well... We'll save here, because I'm not sure if we can delete saves, but the third save is what we have, and I have to just try to remember that next time I start recording, while the uh, fourth and fifth slot can be replaced, obviously. But hey, I hope you've been enjoying thus far, and look forward to more of uh, Mycor <laughs> My Mycorrhizia? No, sorry, Mycorza? Or Mycorrhiza? Mycorrhiza? Something like that. But hey, if you've been enjoying, Please leave a like, comment, hit the subscribe button, become a full subscriber, hit the notification down below for updates on my video. Thank you for watching, and until the next time. Rrr.